Wall Street veteran Bernard Madoff has been arrested and charged with running a $50 billion Ponzi scheme. Congress wants to know what caused the Enron meltdown. Now, well, the collective rage currently is focused on Wilcom. Tyco CEO Dennis Kozlowski was convicted of looting hundreds of millions of dollars. This yeah. is one of the biggest fraud cases ever. Their president's a crook. Well, I'm not a crook. Find out more on this week's episode of White Collars, Red Hands. People only dream of the things that Raffaello Folieri had. An Italian immigrant who went from modest beginnings to living out his days in a luxurious penthouse, eating at the finest restaurants, or touring the world with a lovely A-list actress girlfriend. Even more than that, he claimed to have a special connection to God, the Ooh. G-O-D himself. Raffaello Folieri was a crucial part of business dealings at the Vatican, and his ties to the Holy See opened many doors for his real estate group. Cleverly titled, The Folieri Group, to purchase large swaths of Catholic land in America. But all wasn't exactly what it seemed with Raffaello Folieri, as in the late 2000s a house of cards crashed around him that involved a governor of New York, a former president, and a princess. Learn about it on this week's episode of White Collars, Red Hands. That doesn't sound too bad. What? Until it all came crashing down. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. that's because uh, most of what I said in there was a lie. This man's name is Raffaello Felicio. God damn it. <laughs> you, <laughs> you said you were going to make it. Yet I'm still surprised. No, you should never be surprised. Nothing. His last name sounds like Felicio. I bet he got teased for that all the time. Is the word Felicio mean? Hey, so in Italy, is Felicio Felicio? Or is that an American word? Or an English word, I should say. I don't know. <laughs> Let's look up the root of the word fellatio. I think it's like gelato. Gelato. Also, because in Italian, it'd be like, fellatio. Fellatio. Yeah. Which is, you know. Definition and meaning. Oh, wait. Hold on. It's a Latin. Well, they know Latin. It literally means to suck. Yeah. Hot. What? Just kidding. God damn the the barrel. I, it, it's scraped thin with you. I I don't. I'm it's, sorry. There's like no bottom to the barrel anymore. Oh no no definitely no bottom. You're digging a hole to the center of the fucking earth, which is my hell. <laughs> and that's where we're at right now. Welcome back to White Collars Red Hands. <laughs> and today we're talking about Raffaello Fulgieri. Are you saying your name? Sorry, I'm. I just. I've lost the will. My name's. <laughs> K- My name's Kashan, and I'm Nina. And we're here today to talk about Raffaello Folieri. 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 Uh, Raffaello Folieri was born in the small Italian town of San Giovanni Rotondo. Now that I'm looking at it, it might mean like. St. Giovanni the Fat? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I hope so. Uh, And he was born there in the year of our Lord, 1978, to parents Pasquale and Anne. Raffaele Folieri's life was a modest one, uh, with Pasquale being a pretty good lawyer and journalist, but like many in Italy, Raffaello did grow up in a devoutly Catholic home. Uh, Raffaello was drawn to business at an early age and attended the University of Rome to study law and economics. Nice. And it was here that he founded his first business as well, and for some reason decided to move into the beauty line space uh, as he started Beauty Planet, not Planet Beauty, which if you try to Google it, is all that comes up, a separate beauty line, but he started Beauty Planet in 1999. Uh, Fulgari later would claim that this company was a massive success to anyone who asked and also proudly proclaimed that on the Raffaello Group website. But the company only operated for three years before they bounced a bunch of checks and Raffaello divested his stake in the company for a mere $8,000 in 2002. Um, What did they sell? Was it just cosmetic products? Yeah, well, here's the thing. You couldn't really find it. I couldn't find anything about it online. It's like lost to history. Um, It's also Italian, so maybe it's on the Italian internet somewhere. Yeah. Um, 
but it just said that it was like a beauty, like from the articles from the times, so like early 2000s, like 2006, it just said a beauty line. Okay. So, so I'm assuming like shampoos and conditioners and soaps, makeup, uh, maybe a little bit before bath bombs were popular, but Ooh, perhaps, I was at, maybe old, a bath bomb. okay. So when I'm walking to the parking garage, that I park at for work, there's a whole foods. And if I'm cold, I cut through the whole foods. So today I was cold and I cut through the whole foods. Um, and this guy was talking to his wife and he's like, did we have any bath bombs left? And I was like, what a weird sentence. Especially in a fucking Whole Foods. I know. Where are you? You're like seeing a cantaloupe and you're like, oh my God. I need that bath bomb. You got to get bath bombs. It was weird. It was weird. Made me think of that though. When you said bath bomb. I was like, what a strange man. And then I was just imagining a man in a bathtub with a bath bomb in it. What are you trying to say? I don't know. Because I want you to know... I'm a bath boy. You are a bath okay? boy. I'm a bath boy. I'm a boy and I take baths. And guess what I also have? Bath bombs? Bath bombs. I didn't know that. That's right. I don't know. So don't, so maybe put your gavel and your powdered wig, wig away. Stop <laughs> judging me so hard. I just for wanting to relax hate, in a bathtub. I don't like taking baths. Okay. You can like whatever you want. I want to feel like soup sometime. I feel dirty when I take a bath. Okay, you should the rest of the time. So it's kind of it's kind of opposite. It's only then that you do. Rude. Well, that's what it, that's. I'm on my shit today. I'm you sorry. Are. I'm you sorry. Are. Um, after he moved on from, I can't even remember which one. It, Planet Beauty or was it Beauty Planet? Who gives a fuck? The whole company collapsed after he moved on from it. Uh, that year, he decided that business ventures in Italy were a little overrated, and he left. For America, landing in New York City, he then decided to try his hand in the business that all rich people that don't deserve their wealth are in, real estate. Uh, he started the Foyeri Group, appointing himself, no surprise, as the CEO and as president. What? What's the difference? What? What's the difference between CEO and president? I don't know. Something, I'm sure. Okay. Probably not a lot. I think CEO's right above president. Got you. As far as it goes, who knows? Uh, and he placed his father in the president's seat, Pasquale. Uh, so I don't know what the opposite of a, a nepo baby is. Maybe a nepo daddy. So, mm. so Pasquale Foglieri is one hundred percent a nepo daddy. And you heard wouldn't it here. he just be a nepotist? You heard it here first. I think a nepotist would be someone who just commits nepotism. The person who puts the person in the power. Mm. So technically, Raffaello would be a, a nepotist. A nepotee. A nepotese? I don't know. I like nepo daddy, so that's what we're going with. Nepo daddy's cute. Uh, so how does one start a real estate firm in a country that you do not know very well or even speak the dominant language of? He didn't speak English? Not very well. I guess uh, people at the time who uh, knew him well were like, yeah, he barely spoke any English when he moved here. When he started the company, he barely did. Um, so in Pasquale... Definitely didn't. Interesting. So out here making moves. Uh, so what did you have to do? You have to connect uh, to the people that you have common ground with. And that's exactly what Raffaello did. He created his connections with other prominent Italian businessmen in the city, um, appointing a VP in the Foglieri Group to Vincent Ponte and passed him off as a prominent, quote unquote, real estate developer. But Vincent Ponte was actually uh, one of the owners and proprietors of one of the largest waste management companies in New York City, which was Vincent Ponte and Sons, the name, um, which, by the way, had known ties to the Gambino and Genovese crime families of New York. Uh, and one of the sons of Vincent Ponte and Sons had already pleaded guilty to bribery as of the appointment. Oh, nice. There was some, I didn't look super hard into it, but I guess there was, I don't know, maybe we'll cover it. It was kind of interesting. There was a whole, like, garbage crime racket hmm. that was going on. Like, they were, like, laundering money through... The um, garbage company? Yeah, through the garbage companies of New York. And it was a big thing that got cracked down on. They were part of that. Interesting. New VP of the full year group. Get him in there. Um, he also showed ties to the Vatican, hiring Andrea Sedano to the firm as another VP. And the Sedano family had been involved very closely with the Holy See. And Andrea's uncle had served as the Secretary of State for the Roman Curia. So that's like the mm -hmm. it's like the Vatican Senate, oh, basically. Okay. And the Secretary, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, and the Secretary of State's like the leader. Yeah. So, you know, they're very close ties to the Vatican. Um, 
Although he had both the mob and God on his side somehow, it took a few years for the firm to get off the ground as Raffaello tried to navigate through what it means to own a business in America. However, that was all about to change in 2004. You see, Raffaello had made it a point that he mainly wanted to deal in Catholic real estate here in America. He wanted to serve the church out here in America just as a mm. devout little Catholic mm. boy would want to do. Um, it's what he knew and what he was passionate about. Uh, but the Catholic church has been running for well over 1,000 years. Why would they need this random dude in New York's help in the real estate market? Good question. Well, I'll tell you why. Because in 2004, a report was released that was about to answer that question. The report titled, <clears throat> The Nature and Scope of Problems of Sexual Abuse of Minors by Priests and Deacons. Well, awesome, a yeah. fun little weekend read. Yeah. Uh, did exactly what it set out to do and informed the public that over 4,000 priests oh, fuck. were alleged to have committed some sort of sexual abuse. That's so many. On minors in 2004. That's so many. Yeah. Now... This was obviously not a good look for the church. Uh, they've done some awful things, but this one is obviously well-remembered. Uh, they were getting dragged into court for constant lawsuits after this. And on top of that, they lost a lot of churchgoers worldwide in the aftermath. And parishioners were already down mm -hmm. leading up to the mm -hmm. early 2000s. Mm -hmm. Like, less people were going to church, and now this whole... Scandal comes through, this paper breaks and dips even more. I think there's so many people who already have one foot out the door that when something this heinous happens, they're just like, I'm done. Especially. And I mean, like, come on, schisms happen constantly over smaller things. Yeah, for sure. Right? So yeah, pe people don't like when uh, priests are diddling little boys too much. So yeah. I, just, I'm right there with them. Just people don't, people seem to not like that for some reason. Yeah, I don't yeah. know why, but. Um, and a dip in churchgoers means a significant loss in their biggest money-making exercise, tithing. Uh, obviously, the church makes a lot of money in other ways. We've done some we've done some episodes on that, you know, yeah. uh, laundering money for the mob or taking Nazi gold, uh, both actual uh, things that they they've done. They unfortunately were. Previously. Uh, but they do still get a lot of their money from people just handing it over to them for no good reason. Uh, and the Pope forked over almost... Two billion dollars, billion with a B in lawsuit settlements that year alone in 2004. And that left the church in a bad position. And since attendance had been going down in mass, <laughs> uh, even before this incident, the church decided uh, they would have to divest some of their real estate by selling their churches and other oh, shit. and other church held property. They just they needed money and they needed it now and they didn't have a lump sum that they could give over to JG Wentworth. Uh, and of course, who was right there with open arms to help the battered church? It was none other than Raffaello Folieri. He caught many of their eyes by pro by proclaiming publicly that the Folieri group would keep in mind the ethical use of the land when selling or developing it. Um, another real estate firm might start, I don't know, buying up Catholic churches and turning them into things like massive dildo stores. Hell yeah! Planned parenthoods. Ooh. Or Hallmark stores that only sell Happy Holidays cards and perpetuate the war on Christmas. Ah! They couldn't have that. No. So Raffaello said that they would make sure that the Holy Land that used to be owned by the church went to good works like soup kitchens, orphanages, or places of torture for the LGBTQ community, also known as Cracker Barrels. Yeah. The godliest place. It, well, you know, I it is country fresh, so. Uh, Raffaello Fulieri would gain favor with these clients um, selling this real estate by grossly overstating the ties that he had to the Catholic Church and also just outright lying most of the time. Um, sure, he did employ Andrea Sedano, who had ties to the Catholic Church. And by the way, Andrea Sedano always tried to flex his muscle by showing pictures uh, to potential clients of his kids with the Pope. That's pretty cool, though. I would I'd be flexing and pictures. I, I mean, look, I, made, I met Pope Francis. He's like, 
sell me your church. I know, I know the big guy. Well, which pope? Do you remember which pope it was? I don't fucking know. The the pope from two thousand and two thousand and five. That might have been John Paul the second. They all got the same names. I don't, I don't know. know when Benedict the sixteenth went in. Your guess is as good as mine. I don't know anything about almost any of the popes except for the really evil ones. Dude, like Pope the one, like Benedict. The one that the, gave a trial to a corpse. I don't remember his name, but I know a pope did that. Gave a trial to a corpse? Yeah, they put on the previous the previous pope on trial, but he was dead, obviously. So they literally brought his corpse into the room, had a trial, deemed him guilty while he's dead, and then threw his body into the Tiber River. I did not know this story. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. The next pope felt bad, though, and dug him out. And then No, stop! I swear to God, this is true. You can look it up. I don't remember the names, but it is true. What the fuck? Uh, but so Andrea Sedano is showing pictures of his kids with uh, the Pope to everybody. Uh, but Folieri would also outright claim to be the chief financial officer of the Vatican. That doesn't seem right. Well, it's nonsense. It makes no sense. Uh, that's not a thing. That, that, that's not a title. But somehow the people who were selling this land, which were Catholic people, would be like, oh, okay. He was the assistant to the regional director. Yeah. He's like, okay, he's the CF he's the CFO of the Vatican. Sure, that sounds that's a, that sounds that sounds, legit. that sounds about right. Yeah. Um um he also would claim that this connection like legally granted him or like uh, like legally granted him in the Vatican's eyes at least, um, the right to first refusal for any Catholic property in the United States. And at a hefty discount, he said, he said, not only do you need to ask me first before selling to anyone else, because I am the financial emissary from the Vatican yeah. here in America, but you also need to like, give me a, like, give, give me a price cut. Like it was like circa early. He just made this shit up and people were listening to him. Uh, yeah. As far as I can tell, huh, I mean, you got to remember the, the internet was new. It's true. Maybe they literally were just like, yeah, I mean, this guy says he's, uh, well, I mean, he says he's from the Vatican. I mean, you know, they really, <sighs> Christians in general are pretty gullible. And if he's posing to be on their, his, their side, they probably did believe him. And here's the thing. Not everyone believed him. Like, uh, the guy who was being interviewed about meeting with Sedano and him showing him the, the pictures of his kids with the Pope, he sold to somebody else. <laughs> like they, it didn't always work, but like it did work enough. Mm -hmm. Obviously, from everything we're about to talk about, about how much money this made Raffaello Foglieri. So, um, in reality, though, uh, Foglieri did have a connection in the Vatican. He did. Uh, it was one guy who was a clerk at a small church that could, like, sometimes get him private tours the Vatican Gardens. That would be dope, though. That that was his. That was his one connection, though. Did you go to the Vatican when you went to Rome? I did. It was, I've been there. It was phenomenal. It's, 10 out of 10 would go again. It's very impressive. It's also built on a lot of blood, but it's very impressive. I walked up I some mean, tower thing. Not, I right? thought I was going to die. You mean the obelisk? Maybe. The big thing in the courtyard? Uh-huh. It's the obelisk. They're all around Rome. They stole them from Egypt. Oh. Well, I climbed up it. Yeah, that, it was that very one, high. That one is like the biggest one that's still standing to this day, if I remember correctly. Yeah, they're all stolen from Egypt. They like went to Egypt. They stole the towers or stole the idea? They stole the towers. They're the actual towers from Egypt. The, the Holy Roman Empire extended into Egypt and they like conquered it and then like stole their obelisks and brought them back to Rome. I did not know this. Did you not take a tour while you were out there? What were you doing? Um, We didn't have a guided tour. Oh, yeah. So that's all I did. So people told me stuff about things. Oh, no, no, no. We just did like a choose your own adventure oh yeah no well we we did do that too but we paid for tours so that people could tell us we were like well I cla classic americans except for i didn't have a fanny pack i should have though they're, they're very they're very it's easy to take things along with you outside I, the vatican i went into a, a store that had nutella jars this big why wow, you really saw all rome had to offer huh <laughs> really did. the vatican and large nutella jars yes great um so he has this one guy who can let him see the Vatican Gardens, and it was basically like having a friend that works at Sonic Drive-In uh, that brings you free ice cream, but like only sometimes when the machine isn't broken, and then you claiming that you know the CEO of Sonic, Jay Hudson, and that you visit him every time you're in town, and that you have first refusal 
to buy all teenagers on roller skates and at a discount. Kashan used to work at Sonic. That was his first job. I did. Well, that's why, I, you know. That oh, that's why been, you knew the CEO's name, Jay been, Hudson. I did not. I had to look it up. Uh, but Jay that, Edgar Hoover, man. the uh, CEO of Sonic. Yeah, man. That's why it's going downhill. Yeah. That whole place is a great depression. I have not eaten at a Sonic in ages. It's pretty good. I'm not going to lie. I still like yeah, it. Yeah, fucking slaps. I still like it. Um, nevertheless, people believed Raffaello, uh, although people believing him might have a little to do with some of the other underhanded tricks uh, that he used. For example, he kept the robes of a high-ranking Catholic priest with him, like, in his car. And he, sometimes he would visit with, like, just regular priests and then he'd be like, uh, put this on. <laughs> like, put this on so you look more important than you are. Yeah. And they do it. <laughs> so. What the heck? So they'd be like, oh, man, this guy's got to be serious. He's got a car. Yeah. Them, but they just, like, bought the hat off. <laughs> Amazon? Yeah, like Vaticanazon. That didn't work. <laughs> Vaticanazon? That, it just sounded like, I'd have it, like I was having a stroke. I yeah. tried to combine the Vatican and Amazon. I saw what you did there. It didn't work. Amazatican? Yeah, that's uh, bad, too. Vaticans are us whatever you get the idea yeah. he, he basically just fucking got these somewhere and was and they were playing dress up um and all of this notoriety the money really started rolling in people believed him he was getting all the real estate he was getting money in uh, he could be seen uh, around town sporting expensive caraceni italian suits they're like thirteen thousand dollar italian suits oh my god yeah, and uh was noted that he wore the same ties that were worn by jfk but how bad end for same him, huh? one? Well, no. Same it's, brand? Yeah, it's hard to get blood out of a tie. But yeah, it's like the same. The same kind of tie. Uh. The same time maker. The same, yeah, whatever. Um, his looks were also uh, the talk of the town. He was descri described as a chubby Italian Zach Braff. <laughs> Just the guy from Scrubs. My friend and I. too young to remember. Yeah, no, my friend in high school would always say that Zach Braff had juicy lips. Weird. Yeah. Weird. I would not describe Zach Braff as heartthrob. Um, you know? He is a weirdo. Oh, maybe. That guy's so weird. He had like a uter like a um like he got a uterus chair built. Like it looks like a giant uterus. And he would like sit in it in the fetal position in his home. That's kind of funny. It's it, fucking it, weird. If he dude. does it if he does it ironically, it's funny. If he does it non ironically, it's serial killer behavior. Well, his power and his looks uh, led him to finally meet a princess in Europe in late 2004. This princess was famous for her messy hair and the relative obscurity of her ruling country, Genovia. If you didn't get that reference, then I will just tell you that Genovia is a made-up country uh, in the 2001 hit Disney film, the Princess Diaries, starring the one and only Anne Hathaway. <laughs> Fucking phenomenal film. Which would be Raffaello's Princess. How do you feel about Princess Diaries 2, though? Good sequel? Solid uh, sequel? Okay. No. It's fine. I think it was okay. Chris Pine did his job. It was okay. Um, I heard they're in a third is in works. Uh, probably. They're making... Why did they, they keep doing that? I wish they'd stop... They should make another Ella Enchanted is what they should do. That movie slapped. Ella Enchanted was great. That movie slapped. Still does, I'm sure. How do I know he loves me? How do I know he's yours? How do you show her you love her? So good. No one, I don't think anyone got that reference. Well, then maybe you didn't did. watch Enchanted. Maybe there's, maybe that, wait. Are you singing a song from Enchanted? Ella Enchanted? What movie did you say? Ella Enchanted. But is that from... It's from Ella Enchanted. When did they sing that? The Amy, Amy Adams movie? That's Enchanted. Oh. You're singing, you're referencing a different movie that Anne Hathaway is not even in. Enchanted, where she pops out of the sewer or whatever, and they're like, they're in real person world. That's a completely different movie. <laughs> Ellen Chanted, the only songs that are in it are like real life songs. <laughs> Did she have a sword in that movie? I don't know, probably. She was like in the woods with a sword and Ellen Chanted. 
You're fucking ridiculous. I'm sorry. Sorry that I confused Ella Enchanted with Enchanted. I forgive you. Uh, Anne Hathaway, who grew up, I don't know if you knew this, she grew up a very devout Catholic herself. She wanted to be a nun at one point. We all wanted to go into ministry. She's not special. No, we did not. We did not all <laughs> want to go into ministry. I definitely never, I never wanted to be a nun. Um, you had, you didn't want none of that? No. Maybe to find myself. You had nothing to do with it? Maybe to find myself within a nunnery. Ooh. Like all those documentaries online. Yeah, where like lonely men find themselves in, in nunneries at night. I think we're watching different documentaries. No, they're really compelling documentaries. It's great. Um, That's, are, are you finding documentaries on Pornhub again? You mean the leading documentary site? Yeah, of course. Oh, heard. <laughs> of course. Um, well, she fell in love with too many cannoli sack brats <laughs> quickly. <laughs> I forgot to put that in there. <laughs> it it might have helped that he was able uh, to take her on one of those private Vatican tours mentioned earlier. Wow, can you imagine being that jazzed about Catholicism? Like, that he's like, I've got a trip planned for you. Let's Which, like, okay, gardens. I would not mind a private tour of the Vatican. However, it would not douse my panties in holy Specifically water. Specifically the Vatican Gardens. Not everyone can get in there. You gotta be, like, let in there. Mm. Yeah. Um, he showed her his penthouse in Trump Tower. He owned the penthouse in Trump Tower in New York. And he flew her all over the world. And being in your early 20s and newly a movie star, of course you would be impressed by all this. Hell yeah. Uh, while he developed his relationship with Anne, uh, he also furthered his business dealings as he met with Doug Band, a senior aide to former President Bill Clinton. Uh, Doug was able to get Raffaello in contact with ever-increasingly important people uh, starting with Canadian real estate developer Michael Cooper. And later it was revealed, by the way, that Raffaello had paid a $400,000 uh, consulting fee to Band for arranging this meeting. So it turns out he paid like almost half a million dollars just to meet this guy. At least Damn. the first one. Uh, Raffaello also met uh, with billionaire Ron Burkle, who is part owner of the Pittsburgh Penguins hockey team and whose private investment firm, Ukaipa companies has held controlling stakes in companies ranging from grocery store chain Dominix to email slash search engine former powerhouse Yahoo. Does anybody use that anymore? I have a Yahoo account, but only uh, I have a Yahoo account, but only because I had one since I was like 12. Right. You know, I don't think I don't think people are if people are still signing up for new Yahoo accounts. What are you doing? Maybe get, I should get a Gmail account like an adult. Yeah. And, and if you're going to get something like like really funnily old like like it for for the comedic effect to get a hotmail account yeah right or an msn account oh my god yeah get, like don't yahoo it's like perfectly in the middle between like not old enough to be funny and not good enough to have but here we are um and out of this joint meeting uh came a joint venture between raffaello and ron so he must have won him over because he he said that he would invest uh and they entitled it once again very uncleverly, the Foliari Yukaipa Investments. Just Foliari Yukaipa Investments. These guys, they have no... No creativity. No creativity, not one, they just, not one they're else. They're too busy, like, scamming people to be creative. I guess so. Uh, but Ron put $105 million into the pot to continue the investment of buying and selling church property. This allowed for Raffaello to meet Bill Clinton for the first Ooh. time. And they vacationed together in the Dominican Republic, of course, after Raffaello had made a sizable donation to the Clinton Foundation. Aww. I think he, I think it was like $15 million. Oh, that was nice of Bill Clinton so, to take what, him on a vacation afterwards. Yeah, right? Mm. Oh, so there's a picture of Raffaello and Anne Hathaway and Bill and Hillary Clinton just all just hanging out on an island in the Dominican Republic. That's so fucking weird. That's a photo that I bet exists. they all watched each other have sex. That sounds so weird. I hope so. Why else would you go to the Dominican Republic with a former president? Like it like if me and Michelle Obama are like hanging out in the Dominican Republic, we better be having an orgy. I guess that's true. I, like, but I, she would peg I, you. Who? Michelle Obama? Hell yeah, she I would. hope so. Yeah, you would not be fuck no, Michelle Obama would so. fuck you. You don't fuck Michelle Obama. No one fucks Michelle Obama. 
I don't even know if Barack does. Barack hasn't had sex with Michelle Obama since ever. Well, I don't. They I don't have two children. I don't know how they had them. Oh. Magic. Um, <laughs> how is all that church real estate going? By the way, bad. Hmm. Uh, the Folieri Group claimed to have contacts or contracts to acquire over one hundred million dollars in church property, and they were bidding on the rights to buy two hundred and fifty million more. But the property they had bought already had been hard to sell. They were often maybe breaking even or even posting a loss when they could actually sell these things. Um, Additionally, Raffaello had started the Folieri Foundation, a charity with Anne Hathaway on the board that was attempting to vaccinate kids in Central America. But even that had missed their goal. They set out to vaccinate 190,000 children at the start, and all in all, they they had only vaccinated 1,000. So they set out to vaccinate 190,000 children. And after like a couple years, they had vaccinated 1,000 children. That's not a good, uh, yeah, you're, it's not going well. You're off by a smidge. This is a bad charity. 189,000. You you were close. That's um, how many you were off. That's bad. So all in all, I don't think Raffaello was very good at running businesses. No. He was posting losses on the church, and he couldn't even get vaccines to children in Central America. No. What's going on? Uh, How, then, did he keep up his expensive lifestyle if he was so bad at business? Well, a 2007 lawsuit aimed at him by former business partner Ron Burkle claimed that he did it by misappropriating the funds from their joint investment, Folieri Yakaipa Investments. The lawsuit claimed that Raffaello siphoned off at least $1.3 million from the investment firm to pay the $40,000 a month rent for his penthouse apartment, flowers, private jet costs, flowers and cosmetics, wine and dinners for Anne, uh, as well as a bunch of yacht rentals. Um, This put some pressure on other aspects of Raffaello's business, and with his main source of cash cut off, some other cracks began to show. Um, He did settle that suit with Ron Burkle outside of court somehow. He came up with the $1.3 million, uh, but months later, he was sued for an additional $500,000 by a private jet firm for non-payment on flights the previous year. That's half a million. Uh, Later that month, this all went down. Super quick. Raviello was picked up by New York PD officers in the lobby of one of his apartments for signing a bad check, which, I mean, hey, plenty of people have, have written bad checks, okay? It's just that this one happened to be for $215,000. Uh, and when the police looked into his finances that day, he had exactly $39.08 in his bank account. Wow, I have more money than that. Yeah, so... It wasn't looking good. Um, After this, state attorney general and future governor of New York, Andrew Cuomo, announced that an investigation into the Folieri Foundation, his charity, was also going to commence. Um, All the way through this, like this this has been going on for speculation, at least about this, had been going on for like six months. Um, Anne Hathaway had remained by Folieri. What? Probably longer than you'd, you'd think, right? Uh, but investigation into an entity that she was involved in kind of seemed to be the last thing that she could take. She stepped down from the board, and it was released that the couple had split after three years together. Dang. They did it for three years. Dang. That's not an insignificant amount of time, That's especially time. in Hollywood dating. It's a long time no matter They what. might as well have been married, divorced, remarried, divorced, remarried, divorced. Yeah. By that point in yeah. Hollywood. Mm. Now, with almost no support... Anne had paid the last four months' rent on Raffaello's apartment, the $40,000 apartment. Anne had paid the last four months. So without any of this support, Raffaello was in ruins. And so were his businesses. And he was arrested as a result of an FBI investigation. The investigation turned up all of the previous dirty laundry and dirty deeds that Raffaello was committing showing that the Vatican had sent him a cease and desist notice to stop (laughs) claiming any official ties with them to gain favor when bidding on church property. He's like, hey, we don't know you, okay? Multiple times they were like, I don't fuck 
fucking know but you. Like, Stop. We don't know who this guy is. Uh, the investigation also turned up evidence that Foyeri had swindled investors out of funds by claiming to need, uh, at one point, $800,000 to build an office in Rome. That, yeah. That he, okay. That he never intended to build. That he actually did this by he he got like um, engineering quotes for a building in Rome and charged it to an engineering company that was actually a shell company that he owned. And then he took investor money and then just like paid it to himself that way. Um, he also had wired almost $1 million out of the company in investor funds to an account that he controlled in Monaco um, illegally. Raviel, Raviello decided that a plea deal would be the best way to go. And he pleaded guilty to uh, one count of conspiracy to commit wire fraud, eight counts of wire fraud, and five counts of money laundering. He was sentenced to four and a half years in prison and ordered to forfeit around two and a half million dollars in cash, as well as jewelry and watches that he had. Um, he did serve his time. He served almost the full time. I think he served about four years. Uh, after serving his time, Raffaello was deported back to Italy, banned from ever entering the U.S. again, and has continued to launch business ventures in Italy that have had minor success. Uh, Foglieri Energy is an energy company headquartered in London that, at least as far as I can tell, still operates to this day. Wow. Um, oh, but he does have a paid-for post in Forbes India that says he invests in things from rare earth metals to electric vehicle chargers. Um, so maybe it isn't actually that great. Yeah. Inter- it, call, it calls him like the king, the king of rare earth metals is what the, the king of rare earth metals is, is what the, okay. art, is what the article is titled. I was like, wow, people are still, this was recent. This was like earlier this year that this, this was released in Forbes India. And I was like, wow, people are still talking about his business. And I clicked on it and really big on the side. It says paid for posts. <laughs> And I was like, oh, nice. well, maybe it's not that great. Uh, so thus ends the story of Raffaello Foglieri, who seems to still be able to afford suits, as far as I can tell, just not expensive Italian ones, more like the ones they sell at Walmart for a hundred bucks. Hey, yeah, those are nice suits. No, oh, they, they, they are suits. They are suits. Uh, he was once on top of the world, just like he was on top of the Trump Tower. And just like he was on top of Anne Hathaway, another one. Uh, <laughs> looking out, <laughs> looking out over New York with his A-list girlfriend and private chef. But you have to wonder if he knew about the downfall that was coming. He had to have known that his entire business model was built on lies. He knew he wasn't the CFO of the Vatican, and that the money he got from the Clinton Foundation was slowly being bled to fund his romps around the world. How can anyone truly enjoy all of that while knowing they live in a house of cards? And to do all built on lies about connections to the church. You know, you must not be the best person when in the middle of one of the largest pedophile scandals in history, the church makes a point of saying, hey, that guy... We don't know that guy. Yeah, it's pretty bad. That guy, we don't know that guy. Okay, we're not affiliated with that guy. Like we may be bad, but that guy. But that guy's really bad. That guy's bad. Okay, um, but at least here in America, we know we are safe from Raffaello Foglieri, as he is more banned from this country than I am from Golden Corral for sticking my fingers into the chocolate fountain like Augustus Gloop and Willy Wonka. You ever want to do that on one of those? God, I want to stick my fingers in that fountain so bad. Gross. Is that just me? Yeah. All right. Well, that's why I'm banned. Uh, but while we may not be forced to endure the likes of Raffaello Foglieri, we were unfortunately still burdened by the likes of Hoodwinked from his former other half, which read in Hoodwinked, the animated movie was voiced by Anne Hathaway. I didn't know that, but yeah. it is. And that movie fucking sucks. But honestly, it was hard to find bad uh, Anne Hathaway movies for that bit. That was the only one. I was like, okay, well. I was going, I was like, she's got to have done a stinker, right? Everyone's done a stinker. You that couldn't one. really find one. I was like, damn, Anne. Hoodwinked. Hoodwinked, sure one. And it still has a six and a half on, 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 on like IMDb. It shouldn't. Ten. It shouldn't, but it does. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that's it. That's the story of Raffaello Foglieri, the former former uh, beau of Anne Hathaway that stole um, multiple million dollars from a former president. Damn. 
Or, well, not from a former president, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, stole a bunch of money. House of cards. So thank you guys for listening today uh, to this episode. I hope you liked it. This was this was Kashan's take on pop culture. Yeah. It turns out the only pop culture episodes I can do are ones from 20 years ago. <laughs> 20 years ago. That's that's my that's where my pop culture still references still reside. Yeah. Is, is around there. Um, so hopefully you liked it if you did like it. All right. You can do some things. Show you liked it. What is that? What is that, Kashan? You say, what well, is it? Oh, thank you. Uh, Kashan, what is it? Oh, now you're sounding like my, now you're sounding like my night paralysis, Steven. So, okay, let's not do that. <laughs> um, well, you can do it by going and leaving a review. You can write a review on Apple Podcasts, which are statistics show. That's where most of you are right now. So go ahead. If you haven't done it already, write a review. Leave a five-star rating. You want to rate us? You're not listening on Apple Podcasts? Well, you can do that only if you're also listening on Spotify. You can do it there. And why would you also want to listen on Spotify? Well, our videos are there. So you want to see our faces? We're looking at the camera right now. You could be making sweet, sweet eye contact with us instead of just making sweet, sweet my voice to your ear contact. Okay? Hell yeah. Uh, you could do that. Spotify. You could also do that. YouTube. Go to YouTube. Comment on our videos. Like them. Subscribe, please. White Collars Red Hands uh, is the channel name. Go on there. Uh, and you can follow us also anywhere else you listen to podcasts. Follow, like, subscribe, whatever your podcatcher their thing is do that um you can also go to our website whitecollarsredhands.com you can connect with us there or the drop us a line box or you can go to our merch page there check out our merch buy something uh a hoodie there we go i can't think of words a hoodie a, a Sticker. t-shirt stickers all the above you can go there you can do that that helps us out and and supports us and thank you uh not just by listening but by money we love that um you can also stay in touch with us on our socials, facebook.com slash white collars red hands, Twitter at white collars pod, uh, Instagram at white collars underscore red hands. You can go follow us on TikTok. Uh, it's been going good over there. White collars red hands, no surprise. Uh, follow us there, engage with us, us there. Duet us. Yeah, you could duet us. Duet us. Uh, yeah. Duet or stitch us. us. Yeah, uh, whatever, what those mean. Nine is the TikToker. I don't know. If yeah, you, if you, you can do those. Yeah, things. if you can tell them an old man. Um, other than that, I think that's it. I can tell Nina's about to pass out, so we'll, we'll <laughs> so we'll end it here. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next week on another episode of White Collars Red, Red Hands. Hands.